Hello, my name is Jason Gonzalez, and I'm here reporting for GSU TV. Governor State University was the center of the ceremonial bill signing of HB 5014, the Southland Stroke Prevention and Awareness Campaign. This bill focuses not only on stroke recognition, but also prevention tactics. It will give the Southland community access to dependable, factual sources of information about strokes. This event's panel consisted of Executive Director Maureen Kelly, Dr. Tonya Robertson, Dr. Natasha Washington, Dr. Beverly Schneider, the 38th District Illinois State Representative Debbie Myers Martin, and the Honorable Lieutenant Governor Juliana Stratton. This act empowers the students and faculty of Governor State University to continue the work of promoting public health so that you can push forward and make an even greater difference by bringing awareness and providing information on strokes for communities most affected. This is how we create a better future, by joining forces and ensuring all voices are heard and are part of the conversation. Just know that our administration stands with you because we recognize that quality, accessible health care is a right, not a privilege. And that's why Governor Pritzker has outlined robust investments in our state's health care system in the proposed fiscal year 24 budget. From expanding and supporting the health care workforce, especially in underserved regions of Illinois, to bolstering our public health infrastructure, we are focused on improving health outcomes for our most vulnerable. I know that this is a mission that is important to each of you here today. The Southland Stroke Prevention and Awareness Campaign is a major stride that will bring us closer to health equity for all. And I commend your hard work and your care in this journey. The core goal for this bill is to encourage the spread of reliable sources and prevent strokes among millions of residents throughout Illinois. The Illinois Department of Public Health will provide allocated funds to Governor State University to support this imperative stroke awareness campaign. Thanks for watching. This is Jason Gonzalez reporting for GSU TV. Hi, and welcome to GSU TV. The Center for Community Media presents the Service Learning and Social Change and Criminal Justice event. During this event, participants got to screen the 2021 2022 Karen Jacobson video on learning and social change in criminal justice education. Programs in Chicago. So we asked them to provide us with some individuals who have come out of prison who are interested in talking to criminal justice students about their experiences. What is it like to come out into a society that is dealing with a pandemic? The Center for Community Media provided various foods and refreshments to participants who came to the event. Professor Jacob's video was produced by Department of Digital Learning and Media Design as part of the Media Research Institute of the Center for Community Media at Governor State's University. After watching the video, participants could ask Professor Jacobson some questions. Um, we're talking about how it's good and bad to everybody. And with some of these people, um, it's just that one thing can lead to you doing something that you had no intention of ever doing, and just like, that's where the empathy part comes from. We have to realize that it's good back to everybody, but we could be in that same position if we lived in that, in this, if you grew up in the same environment as now. If you are. We ask Karen Jacobson how important the event was to her. Yeah, this is a culmination of a very long journey. As I said in the beginning, uh, there were a lot of obstacles, COVID, uh, breast cancer, my husband having cancer. We're past that now, and now this product is finished, and it feels great. If you want to learn more about these events, please check your school email for upcoming events or head to www.govs.campuslabs.engage for more information. Thanks for watching. This is Alex Gray with GSU TV. Hi, and welcome to GSU TV. Today, we covered a student senate meeting for February. The student senate mission is to improve the general well-being of GSU students. This is accomplished by conveying student concerns, ideas, and interests concerning 
governance issues to the administrative staff and the teachers. The Student Senate hopes that completing this work will increase the caliber of the GSU academic and extracurricular experience and pr provide opportunities for growth in its members. The student meeting provides various foods, desserts, and refreshments to the participants who came to the meeting. We spoke to Andres Carnejo, the Student Senate Treasurer, about how today's meeting went. Uh, today's meeting is going well. Uh, we're talking about different issues um, regarding the student body. We go over um, some of the recent agenda items we had. So we just recently had a tuition fees increase that was approved by the Board of Trustees. We also discussed some of the other concerns regarding uh, our facilities plan. So we are trying to get different sports teams on campus and just the overall um, different things going on around campus. We spoke to Yuvia Hernandez, the student rep for the Board of Trustees on the Student Senate, and we asked how today's meeting went for her. It was pretty good. I feel like it was very, how do I say, productive because we have people showing up, asking questions, talking about the concerns, and that's re really what we're here for. So it's good to see that people are comfortable coming to us. We speak to Marquise Parks, the Student Senate President, about any recurring problems that have been coming up in the Student Senate meetings. Um, yeah, so the, the lack of our music program, um, as a theater major, I do value something like that. So I think that um, by making noise, um, letting our higher-ups know that this is something that our students want, I think this is something that we can push while I'm still here as a student. All GSU students are invited to communicate with their student center by letting them know about their issues. Meetings are held at the Hall of Honors on the second Thursday of each month at 1 p.m. and are open to the public. The following Student Senate meeting will be on the second Thursday of March at 1 p.m. If you are interested in learning more about the Student Senate meetings, please check your school email for upcoming conferences or head to www.govs.campuslabs.com slash engage for more information. Thanks for watching. This is Alex Gray with GSU TV. Hi, and welcome to GSU TV. Today, Governor State University hosts their first annual badminton tournament. The tournament was held in A Building Gym from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. From 9 to 10 a.m., the GSU staff set up the nets and the lines for the badminton games. Around 10.30 a.m., tournament participants arrived. We spoke to Dominic DePolo, a media studies student at GSU, who was the first to arrive. We asked him what his thoughts were on the competition. I think I'll definitely be surprised by the competition, but I'm not worried about it. You know, I'll just do my thing. Afterwards, more people arrived at the tournament. They were getting ready for the games. At 11 a.m., the first couple of games started with N Valentine and S Ready playing the first game, and the second game had our own GSU TV program instructor Jessica Scott playing against Dominic Del Polo. After the first couple of games, there was a halftime break for players to receive pizza, fruit, and drinks to replenish during the break. Before the second round, we talked to the Bibil Khan, one of the organizers who helped put the event together. We asked him about today's event. Well, we kind of decided that uh, we wanted something for students to come and participate and, uh, you know, first of all, do something as a recreational type of thing where we could, we could just come and have fun. And uh, we decided that badminton was one of the tournaments which uh, we had a lot of requests. A lot of uh, students and faculty members wanted us to organize something like that. So uh, this is something that we hope we continue to do in the future. After halftime, the games continued with the second round of games. Jessica Scott playing against Valentine and another game with P. Moore and N. Patel. The second round of games ended quickly. We had to straight into the semifinal games with P. Moore and A. Vincent and D. Maddie playing against N. Valentine. The four players fought hard to get their final spot, but D. Maddie and A. Vincent were the final contenders. The final games were fought hard and A. Vincent had the heart to keep it up. But towards the end of the match, D. Maddy was the badminton tournament champion. If you're interested in these events, please check your school email for upcoming events. Thanks for watching. This is Alex Gray with GSU TV. The destruction here is uh, incredible. There's, there's, uh, we're in one city right now, where there's. Uh, you know, we could go to each and every building and just know that there's someone that needs help there and there's not enough people to help them. Even though there's over 100,000 rescuers, they would need a million. And this is just one city. Yeah. 
in a very large picture of Turkey. An earthquake with a magnitude of 7.8 struck the country of Turkey overnight on February 6, 2023. It has been named the deadliest disaster in Turkey's modern-day history. Roads have cracked open, buildings have crumbled down, and bridges have been torn apart. It has created difficulties in providing emergency services immediately. The death toll has hit 40,000 and will continue to rise as further debris are cleared up in the coming days. Rescue teams from around the world have arrived to provide aid in the worst areas, but their efforts have only scratched the surface. Multiple days after the natural disaster, individuals are still being discovered, and at times, some of them are alive but have been left with life-threatening injuries that require immediate treatment. Many families are left wondering where the loved ones are in the aftermath of this disaster. Kadiyat. How are you, my life? Brother, where are you? I am in the hospital. They will send me wherever necessary. There is no problem right now. Are you Abdul Qadir's wife's brother? Exactly, my beautiful brother. How is my mother and everyone? They are all waiting for you. Everyone is well. They are all waiting for you. I'm coming to you. Did everyone escape okay? Nasli? They are all well. Everything is well. And waiting for you. They are all waiting for you. Let me hear their voices, if for a moment. I'm driving. I'm coming to you, brother. I'm coming. Thank you to each and every one of you. May God be happy with you a thousand times. This earthquake has left thousands of Turkish residents in grief and shock, as well as fear of the unknown. This is Jason Gonzalez reporting for GSU TV. Watch this just see that chemical pop out of the creek. This is disgusting. On February 3rd, a Norfolk Southern train left its tracks while traveling from Madison, Illinois to Conway, Pennsylvania. 11 of its cars filled with toxic chemicals derailed in East Palestine, Ohio, resulting in a giant explosion damaging all of its surroundings and leaving substantial repercussions. Immediately after the derailment, more than 4,000 residents were evacuated and nearly 500 chose to stay through it all. You know, it was alarming, grabbing the clothes that you can, getting your animals out the best you can, and have no idea when you're going to be coming back. Uh, we have four kids, uh, ranging from 2 till 15, and it's a lot to try to manage and keep them comfortable and happy and also safe at the same time and keep your own sanity through the whole situation. As a result of the derailment, it has caused significant damage to the town's water sources, plants, properties, and overall its residents' health. It's been a very slow recovering process for the town of Palestine. Many residents have been very critical of the local and federal government due to their lack of action and transparency. The governor had mentioned that the, the city municipal water, the wells, were tested and it was okay. Do you feel confident in that? Um, honestly, no, I don't, I been... don't, when he doesn't even respond and he changes his number, no. Michael Reagan, the air quality specialist in the United States Environmental Protection Agency, EPA, visited residents days after the toxic derailment to ensure them that officials and professionals are working together in the recovery process. I'm very uh, clear when I say as long as it takes. Uh, we will go through this process with the, with the citizens of East Palestine for as long as it takes. The federal government will be here for as long as it takes. Uh, the president has called the governor and offered the federal assistance that he needs, and I trust that the governor will uh, accept that offer, and we will be here as long as it takes. This is Jason Gonzalez reporting for GSU TV. Hi, and welcome to GSU TV. This week, Colorado Springs shooter Anderson Lee Aldridge stands trials for 300 counts in connection with the November 19th shooting at Club Q. On top of that, he has been charged with first-degree murder and he's being held in jail without bond. According to 
authorities, Altrich entered Club Q on late November 19 with an AR-style rifle and a pistol. He started firing, killing Daniel, Austin, Raymond Green fans, Kelly Loving, Ashley Pog, and Derek Rump. According to officials, at least 19 additional people were hurt who months were shot. Felicia Pierser Collins, one of the survivors of the club shooting, tells us about the moment before the shooting. I was turning around to make sure my daughter was still behind me, and I was shot in the back of my neck, and it blew the left side of my face off. Felicia was shot twice in the neck, and her daughter was shot once. Both women went to the hospital. It took weeks to recover and countless surgeries to heal the wounds. With physical wounds gone, the only thing that remains is mental scars. Felicia talks about it. We have to deal with this psychologically, physically. Um, it's hard. Currently, survivors are still healing from the tragedy, physically and mentally. This is Alex Gray with GSU TV. Welcome to GSU TV. Today we'll be talking about the upcoming changes to the largest streaming platform, Netflix. By the end of March, millions of users will not be able to watch platform favorites Squid Games, Wednesday, and Stranger Things. Not because they will be leaving the platform, but because, in the 2022 fourth quarter earnings report, Netflix let their stockholders know about a new initiative called Page Sharing. This change will deny access to individuals from sharing accounts outside of their household unless the account's main holder pays an extra fee for sharing its service. This change has already been in full effect in Latin America, causing millions of cancellations. Netflix views this change as a catalyst for an increase in standalone accounts and overall company revenue. This is Jason Gonzalez reporting for GSU TV. It's when things go wrong that your true character is revealed. And right now I'm looking at a tenacious young woman. Welcome to Hollywood Buzz, your source for the latest in the entertainment industry. I am your host, Jason Gonzalez. Today we have stories from legendary music artists, all the way to new announcements of films. Let's get started. Our first story comes from the award-winning artist Beyonce. On February 1st, she announced the Renaissance World Tour. It's been five years since Beyonce has performed a concert in the United States. She will be performing her extended catalog including popular song Cuff It from her seventh studio album Renaissance. On July 22nd, she will be headlining Chicago's iconic stadium Soldier Field. In other news, legendary heavy metal artist Ozzy Osbourne announces the cancellation of his upcoming shows, saying that his touring career is officially over due to physically being incapable of performing for an extended amount of time. He hopes one day to return on stage, but as of now, he thanks his fans for all the support in his career. Now it's time to shift to the news coming from the film industry. Avatar The Way of Water has become the fourth biggest movie of all time. This blockbuster film has generated 2.128 billion only behind films Avatar, Avengers Endgame, and Titanic. The long delayed sequel has stayed on top of the box office since its release. Its third installment is expected to be released on December 2024. It's about that time. It's about that time. It's y'all. official, y'all. Y'all know what it is, right? It's official. Let's Bad boys for life, baby. Martin Lawrence and Will Smith announced the production of the highly anticipated Bad Boys 4 film through an Instagram video. It's been 28 years since the Bad Boy franchise came into fruition. There is no release date as of now. There's only two things I know how to do. That's box and preach. And preach you won't pay the bills. He made me something once, Doc. You can do it again. The life of former world heavyweight champion and boxing legend George Foreman will be depicted on the large screen. Its cast include Chris Davis and Forrest Whitaker. The biopic will follow Foreman's career including the Olympic gold medal performance at the 1968 Mexico City Games. 
The film is set to release on April 28th, 2023. I'm Jessica Watson. And uh, I, I'm planning on being the youngest person to sail around the world non-stop and unassisted. On February 3rd, 2023, the film True Spear will be released on Netflix. Lead actress Tegan Croft plays Jessica Watson, who became the youngest person to ever sail around the world solo and non-stop. The film depicts Watson's true story from her adventure as a 16-year-old. Through her voyage, she shows courage and learns how to deal with loneliness and vulnerability. What makes this film very special is that Jessica Watson, Tegan Croft, and director Sarah Spillane all came together to give a story of hope. Oh, it's it's weird. It's crazy and amazing. We get on great, actually. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we're both a bit shocked at how great we got on because it is such a unique experience having, you know, me playing fake you. But, you know, <laughs> things have been going smoothly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. There's bravery in admitting that you're not okay. So, I'm Jessica Watson. I'm tough and I'm struggling. This is Jason Gonzalez reporting for GSU TV. Here, eight for Russell in the NBA. The no look block to Davis for the slam. Timeout, New Orleans, 12 to 2. Welcome to Sports Talk. I'm your host, Jason Gonzalez. Today we'll be covering the latest and the greatest stories from the world of sports. Let's get started. Coming to the end of the third quarter, LeBron James has shot in history. And there it is! LeBron stands alone! Our first story comes from the NBA, where Los Angeles Lakers superstar LeBron James has now surpassed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar as the NBA's all-time leading scorer. On the night of February 7th, the Lakers faced the Oklahoma City Thunder. This was a game like no other. LeBron James had the opportunity to make history only being 36 points away from the record. In a very up and down game for the Lakers, LeBron was able to compile 38 points in a losing effort. The game came to a complete stop to congratulate King James on a record that many did not believe could be broken. The celebration continued after the game with an exclusive press conference and party. Did you come here tonight to, set, to make sure you set the record? Well, yeah, because my boys leave on a red eye tomorrow night, so. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, I just had the mindset. I had to have a mindset. And I dressed for the occasion, like you said, and I put on a headband because that's where the journey started. And um, I would have had to pay for another room and a hotel for another night for my boys. <laughs> if I didn't do it tonight, they would have been there to stay till Thursday to try to watch this. So, uh, yeah, I'm very smart with this. Uh, with this, uh, no, nah, but I was. Um, tomorrow's not promised, and, and if I had an opportunity to to do it tonight, and I and I was going. I was going to try to make it happen. Two days later, the NBA had its trade deadline, which did not fail to surprise its fans. Two of the biggest trades came out of the Brooklyn Nets organization. They sent two of their All-Stars to different destinations. The first trade conducted included one-time NBA champion Kyrie Irving, who was sent to the Dallas Mavericks for Spencer Dinwiddie, Dorian Finney-Smith, and multiple draft picks. The other blockbuster trade conducted by the Nets sent former MVP Kevin Durant and TJ Warren to the Phoenix Suns for young star Michael Bridges, Cam Johnson, and other compensation. Kevin Durant will now be part of a big four containing Chris Paul, Devin Booker, and DeAndre Ayton. I, I know I've done a lot of good things in basketball, but I haven't done them yet in a Suns jersey, and I'm looking forward to doing it. So um, I want to go out there and do as most as I can and be the best that I can every day for you guys. So. I appreciate the warm welcome, but I got more work to do. The Lakers were one of the teams who were strong buyers this trade deadline. They acquired all-star D'Angelo Russell, Mo Bamba, Malik Beasley, Jared Vanderbilt, Davon Reed, and Rui Hachimura. These trades will bring a new dynamic to a team who hopes to compete for a championship in June. As for the Chicago Bulls, they were one of the only two teams that did not make any moves in the trade deadline. In the bio market, they acquired Chicago's very own Patrick Beverly. 
They currently stand 26 and 33 and are the 11th seed in the East as of the All-Star break. Because they can on 13, people. And this goes into his money right All now. All five will give him 26. Oh, oh 27. Nice. Here we go, okay. Draymond. Okay, uh, making it interesting. Making it interesting. Draymond. Uh oh, he made it interesting. Draymond. 27. Oh, he needed that. From Salt Lake City, the NBA hosted its All Star Weekend. Its three point contest consisted of elite shooters like Tyrese Halliburton, Tyler Hero, Buddy Heald, and many more. After two rounds, Damian Lillard was crowned champion. Dame's last attempt was a two-point money ball that gave him the victory over fierce competition. I don't know who these two guys are. Who are these two guys that is coming out here? Yeah, McClung is the first G League player ever to participate in the sl oh, wait, slam dunk no, competition. He was signed this week by the 76ers to a two-way contract. On Congratulations, Tuesday. brother. Congratulations. I'm worried about the guy holding the other guy. At some point, he gonna go down. Oh, that's a 50. That's the dunk contest was won by an unlikely hero. Mac McClung, a G League player, came out and impressed not only the judges, but the world of basketball. McClung executed perfect 50s on all but one of his dunks to win the contest over Trey Murphy III of the Pelicans in the final. The 72nd All-Star Game consisted of Team LeBron versus Team Giannis. The one who stole the show was Celtics superstar Jason Tatum who scored a record 55 points and received the Kobe Bryant MVP award. At the end, Team Giannis defeated Team LeBron 184-175. to being named Walter Payton Man of the Year is one of the highest honors of my entire career. And now, let me welcome your newest Walter Payton Man of the Year, Dak Prescott. Now we turn to the National Football League, where three days before the big game, its players were honored and the 2022 season was celebrated. The Walter Payton Man of the Year Award went to Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott for his contributions outside of the football field. As well, the NFL's most valuable player was awarded to Patrick Mahomes. In his 2022 campaign, he led the Chiefs to a 14-3 record and the number one seed of the American Conference. Good throw. Tony's got it. Tony walks in. Touchdown, Kansas City. Super Bowl 57 brought the end of the 2022 NFL season. The big game delivered an always possible. It was a tale of the two best teams of the year, the Philadelphia Eagles and the Kansas City Chiefs, who faced one last time to be crowned NFL champions. It was a game full of drama, including moments in which created legends. The battle concluded with the Chiefs coming back from a 10-point deficit and defeating the Eagles 38-35. The Kansas City Chiefs became champions for the third time in its franchise history. Patrick Mahomes also adds a second Super Bowl MVP to his already Hall of Fame career. The NFL will resume back in April where the Chicago Bears will have the first overall draft pick. This is Jason Gonzalez reporting for GSU TV.